Hey, what's going on everybody? Want to take a look at some marketing data today. This is for a bank. This is real data from a bank. Each record represents a customer that the bank reached out to about taking an offer. I believe the offer was for a certificate of deposit. So for each customer they reached out to, they have attributes such as the age of the customer, the job, marital status, education, so on and so forth, all the way across to column Q, where we have a field that indicates did they take the offer or not. So I'm going to jump right into it. We have eight objectives to go through with this data set. I'm going to be using pivot tables to slice and dice it up. All right, let's go. Objective one, how many total customers were contacted? How many took the offer? How many did not? All right. So let's go back to our data table. I'm going to highlight the top left, control A to select all data. We have 45,000 records. Insert pivot table. Let's put it on a new worksheet. And what I'm going to start doing is take the objective and paste it near the table so we can see exactly what we're supposed to be doing. How many customers were contacted in total? So I know there is an age entry for every single record, but I'm not going to use that. Let's use took offer, which is just a yes or no. Let's count that up into the values field. And we could see 45,000 to 11 total customers were contacted. Let's take the took offer variable again and pull it into rows. And that's going to give us our delineation of yes, no's. So of the 45,000 that were reached out to, 5,200 took it, and roughly 40,000 said no to the offer. All right, that completes number one. Number two, what was the percent of customers that took the offer? Also show the percent that did not take the offer. All right, so let's copy that into our data table, analysis table. And this is, this is pretty easy, this one. We're not even going to have to create us a new pivot table. Let's just take equals those that said no to the offer divided by the total. And let's do the same thing equals those that said yes to the offer divided by the total. And that gives you your percent breakdown. I'm going to make that a percent. 88% of people said no. 11.7 said yes. If I highlight these two, they should equal 100%. I see that down in my bottom right bar, just a quick check. So that is correct. Number three, what was the percent of customers that took the offer by job? Show this as a stacked bar expressed as percents. Then add data labels for clarity. Okay, definitely want to copy this question over because I will not remember all that. So. Let's copy this pivot table down just to use as a starting point. Customers that took the job, took the offer by job. So let's pull in the job field. Okay, here we can see the job and whether or not they took it. Let's put took offer over here. All right, so you have job. You no, know they didn't take it. Yes, they did take it in a grand total, which equals our 45,000. Let's throw that into a stacked bar chart, which is the second part of this question. And even though we don't have percents now expressed in the table, this type of bar chart I'm going to grab will do the percent. So check out what I'm talking about. Insert, I'm going to my bar chart menu, and I'm going to go to this third one over and click highlight. Well, I did not, I need to click in my pivot table before I do that to let it know that's where I want to grab data from. Okay, cool. Check this out. So each job type is across the bottom is its own bar. And the percentage, yes or no, either they took the offer or not, is a different color in the bar. So yeses are all the orange. So you can see retired people had the highest share of taking the offer behind students. So you had two ends of the spectrum, students, fairly young people, and retired folks, fairly old. 
uh, were the highest job group that took advantage of the offer. And the next piece of the question is to add data labels. So that's easy, right click, and let's hit add data labels. That just gives us our count. And let's do it one more time with the top portion of this bar, add data labels. And there you can see the counts that make up each of the percentage bars. Again, this is expressed as a percent, the bar, uh, according to this axis right here on the left. All right, number four, show a count of customers that took the offer by age. All right. Oh, let me copy it, the question. And I'm gonna copy this pivot table again just to, to get a starting point. Because it's hooked to the same data set, I don't need to create a, a pivot table from scratch every time. I can just copy one and then start manipulating it. Okay, show count of customers that took the offer by age. So let's pull age into our rows field. Those are all the unique ages in the data table. And let's say took the offer in values and then took the offer one more time, columns. And what I'm gonna do is filter for yes to show only people that took the offer. And let's remove grand total, it's redundant. So there you have by age, so this is age going down here. And these are the count of people who took the offer by age. If, you, if you've been watching, you know I'm a fan of throwing on this kind of conditional formatting. It's kind of a histogram just to show where the, the depth of uh, taking the offer was by age. You can see, look at this. Um, early 30s really got a peak in people taking the offer, tails back up, and we got another little peak around 60 years old. It just makes the data a lot easier to see when you do that. All right, number five, what was the average bank balance for customers who took the offer? How about for those who declined? Okay, let's go down here. And I'm gonna copy that pivot table I was using. Let's clear it out so we can start from scratch. Average bank balance for customers who took the offer. So let's first pull in whether they took the offer or not. And see how it's only saying yes? Because my pivot table still has that filter in there where I deselected no in the previous pivot table. We need to re-enable the no selection. So let's click OK. Now we have both. And so let's go to bank balance. The field name is called balance. Let's pull it in values and let's make it an average. And because it's a bank balance, let's format it as dollars. And there you go. So you can see those customers that did not take the offer had an average bank balance at the time of 1304. Those who did take the offer had a higher bank balance, about $500 higher. All right, number six, group bank balance for customers who took the offer by increments of $100 and show the count of customer for each grouping. Okay, that's not too, too bad. Let's go, I'm gonna copy this pivot table again. We're only concerned with people who took the offer, so I'm gonna select yes. And I'm gonna pull bank balance down here. And I'm gonna pull yes up into the filters field. You see that it's in the top left filters box. Took the offer, I could select either yes or no. I have yes selected. Uh, I have bank balance pulled down here in my rows field. So here is every possible entry of bank balance in my data table. And let's just now count who took the offer by bank balance. I'm pulling took offer into the values window down here. Now we can see for each bank balance who took the offer. Now the question is asking us though, group the bank balance by increments of $100. So instead of having every possible bank balance here, we wanna have buckets that are in $100 increments. So the way you do that, right click in your bank balance, 
group, and here's your starting point, that's the lowest bank balance. Here's your ending point, that's the highest. And it's saying, what size buckets do you want to group that by? And we want to say 100. So let's click OK. And there you go, check that out. So you have counts of who took the offer by bank balances grouped in $100 buckets. Um, so let's do it again. Let's create those data bars. I'm going to highlight all my data I want to visualize, conditional formatting, data bars. And I'm going to choose this one right here. Let's roll up. And we can see where it really gets big. People that had between negative $19 and $80 seem to take the offer. And it tails off from there as your bank balance increases. All right, pretty cool. Let's keep going. Number seven, what was average bank balance for those who said yes and those who said no? But now we want to add in job as a layer above the bank balance and create a bar chart. Okay, so let's pull balance out of here. I'm going to create a whole new pivot table down here. Let's clear it out completely. I'm going to copy this objective right here. What was the average bank balance for those who said yes and those who said no? Okay, so let's pull in, took the offer, yes or no, and see I'm only seeing yes again. Let's, un, let's click that and select no as well. And average bank balance, so that's easy. Balance into values, let's make that an average. And because we're talking money, let's make it a currency. And we've seen this before, uh, the no's bank balance versus the yeses. And now they want us to layer in, let me pull offer down here for now. Layer in job. So let's pull in job. Okay, now you can see by job, the admins that said no to the offer had this bank balance. The admins who said yes to the offer had this bank balance, and so on and so forth. Let's throw that in a bar chart. That is the last piece of the question. So I'm going to make sure I click inside my pivot table to let Excel know I'm planning to make a chart using its data. And let's go to insert bar. Let's pick this one. And I'm not really seeing what I want here. So let's kind of mess around. Right click, select data, switch. And that's not looking like what I want. So I need to mess around. Probably pull took offer up. Yep, that's what I need to do. I pulled took offer up into the columns field. So see how it changed my table? Now I have job here. No yes across the top. And look at that. You can see that table. By job, so admins who said no is are the blue bar. Admins who say yes are the orange bar in terms of bank balance. So look, retired people that said no had this kind of bank balance, who said yes had this kind. All right, pretty cool. Last but not least, what was the average duration of contact? I believe that's in minutes. For those who said yes and those who said no, again, add in job as a layer above duration. Do retired people handle a longer duration? I guess, uh, are they okay talking on the phone longer? That's what that's saying. So let's pull, create a new pivot table by copying this one. I'm going to pull my question over here. Oh, that, that didn't take too well. Let's delete it. I must not have grabbed the whole thing. There we go. And let's copy my question. Okay, average duration of contact. All right, let's clear this out. So duration is the field right here. We want average. And because that's in minutes, let's just leave it as a number with two decimal points. 
So on average, that must be seconds. I stand corrected. I don't think anyone would want to talk for an average of 258 minutes. That is definitely seconds. <laughs> All right. What was the average who said yes and who said no? So let's pull in. Did they take the offer? There we go. If they said no to the offer, they only talked for 221 seconds. If they said yes, they stayed on the phone for, what's that, just shy of 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Add in job layer above duration. Do retire people handle a longer duration call? All right, cool. So let's pull in job right here. And we can see for admins, this was the duration of their pitch. Who's, when they said no, this is when they said yes. Let's actually, I'm going to add on a grand total just so I can see, um, irregardless of if they said yes or no, what was the duration. So I believe that's going to be design grand totals on four columns, rows and columns. There we go. All right, so do retired people have a longer duration of talking? Not really. They, When they said no, they only chatted for 236. When they said yes, they only chatted for 460 with a total average of 287 seconds. We can see that uh, unemployed people seem to chat. Uh, you know, I take that back. Retired people chatted second as, as long as unemployed people. And I guess I was I was too quick to draw that conclusion. So yeah, let me make my uh, bars help me see this and really stretch it out. Yeah, there you go, unemployed, and then the retired blue collar tended to chat a little bit above average, following by services people. Um, who chatted the least? Housemaids, students don't want to chat too much, and then unknown. Don't want to chat too much. So, all right, I was a little quick on the draw, drawing, um, mentioning a conclusion for that one. But nonetheless, that's our last question. That wraps up our eight objectives on a bank marketing data set. Check it out. Get the data set. Follow along. Any questions, let me know. Talk to you soon. Thank you.